Trinity in Bagandato. UMNO members acting as independent or opposition's proposers, seconders, will be sacked. Good afternoon. You're watching News on 2. And I'm Amin Carlos. Be with you for half an hour. Now, the field of education had always received the highest priority in the government's agenda. And Prime Minister Dr. Sri Najib Tun Razak said the quality and access to education now belong to every Malaysian based on the principle of democratization of the field being undertaken by the Barisan National Government. Now, this was evident with the 56 billion ringgit allocation given to the field this year. Di peringkat sekolah rendah, pukul ratanya dalam 8,000 lebih sikit bagi setiap murid setahun yang ditanggung oleh kerajaan sepenuhnya. Dan pada peringkat sekolah menengah pula, hampir 9,000 ringgit setahun. Dan pada peringkat Pendidikan tinggi iaitu di IPTA Lebih daripada 90% Kos pendidikannya Ditampung oleh kerajaan Dr. Sri Najib stated that on average Malaysia's total education expenditure Was as twice as much as other ASEAN countries As far varied from that of developed and developing countries The Education Blueprint 2013-2015 Was another initiative by the government To transform the country into a high income nation By producing skilled human capital In the science and technology field An 18 point manifesto for the Chinese community in Bagandato Which was announced by Deputy Prime Minister Dr. Sri Zahid Hamidi for the next five years will be implemented to improve the well-being and the economic of the people of the constituency. Well, Dr. Sri Dr. Ahmad Zahid, who is also Bagandato incumbent, member of parliament, said that the manifesto will also focus on the economic status of the fishermen. Malam ini ada manifesto khas untuk masyarakat China di Bagandato. Seperti manifesto masyarakat India Walaupun di dalam ini ada lapan saja Aku janji atau inisiatif Tetapi Barisan Nasional Bagandato Menawarkan tujuh belas aku janji Untuk masyarakat China di Bagandato Dr. Sri Dr. Ahmad Zahid said access to education in the technical and vocational education and training scheme, TVET, will be provided apart from increasing the Chinese community's involvement in the NCIA Agropreneur Community Program. In addition, the manifesto will also focus on the ownership of affordable homes through the People's Housing Program PPR project. Well, on a different note, Dr. Sri Dr. Ahmad Zahid said UMNO will sack its members who are the proposers, seconders or sponsors of independent and opposition candidates in the 14th general election. Well, he added that according to the UMNO constitution, those who are directly involved will automatically be sacked as UMNO members with immediate effect. The Deputy Premier, who is also UMNO Vice President, who executes the duties of UMNO Deputy President, said stern action will be taken as a group had betrayed the party. Bukan hanya yang bertanding bebas, tetapi yang jadi pecadang dan penyokong pun. Atau yang, atau yang terlibat cara langsung uh, di dalam uh, penajaan pada calon-calon yang berkenaan, Maka cara otomatik mereka akan terkeluar daripada menjadi ahli kepada UMNO untuk peraturan dan juga perbangan UMNO sendiri. Dato Sri Dr. Ahmad Zahid said this in a media conference after attending the NBOS Satu Aman Week 2018 Combating Crime and Drugs Program at Bagandato Square, Bagandato Pera. Well, meanwhile, the Malaysian Indian Congress, MIC, warns that members that they will be expelled from the party if they contest as independents in the 14th general election. 
Its president, Dr. Sri Dr. S. Subramaniam, said despite only a small number of members found committing the act, it is still violating party constitution and they will be immediately expelled. Tapi yang berlaku itu jumlahnya kecil, bukan di dalam beberapa orang saja. Lebih kita ada lebih kurang 640 lebih 640 lebih ribu kehalian. Daripada itu mungkin 10 20 orang yang melakukan ini, bukan baik. 1% pun tak ada. Dato Sri Dr. Subramanya made the statement following the termination of Dato VM Panjamuthi's membership after he decided to contest in the Batu parliamentary seat as an independent. He also confirmed the departure of Dato Sri S. Suraj from the party prior to nomination day to contest as an independent from the Jaram Padang state seat in Negeri Sembilan. The Barusan National Machinery should not take lightly the, the contest for the Batu parliamentary seat in the 14th general election following the rejection of PKR Vice President Chua Tian Chiang or Tian Chua's nomination by the Election Commission over a court decision. Now, Gerakan President Datu Sri Masu Kyung said the Batu constituency is still a four-cornered fight among VN, PAS and two independent candidates. Now, Datu Sri Ma said that Datu Dr. Dominic Lao Ho Chai has been advised to work harder to secure the Batu seat as this will not be an easy contest. Beritahu, rakan belum, BN belum menang di Batu. Dan uh, calon kita, uh, Lao Hoi Chai, mesti kerja kuat lagi. Sebab uh, dalam pilihan raya, macam-macam boleh jadi. So, masih lagi banyak yang perlu dibuat. Dan uh, saya telah menasihat uh, calon kita, calon Barisan Nasional di Batu supaya teruskan kerja kuat apa yang dia telah buat untuk lima tahun ini. That is Sri Ma said this to reporters after a visit to the Jualan Sentuan program in Taman Denaskada. The Batu parliamentary seat will see BN's candidate and Gerakan Vice President, Dr. Dr. Dominic, being challenged by Asa Yahya of PAS and independent candidates, VM Panjamuthi Muthusami and P. Prabakaran Paramis Narin. Malacca Barasa National has concluded all matters pertaining to permit application to hold a political or political talks during GE14 campaigning period. Its chairman, Dr. Sri Idris Haron, said the application process was completed within 24 hours after nomination day to allow smooth campaigning process for party machinery. Kita tidak ada sebarang masalah. Uh, Ceramah-ceramah kita telah pun bermula, uh, mula petang tadi. Dan uh, semalam kita dah mula group meeting rumah-rumah. Uh, di Melaka, tak apalah walaupun benda ni strategi kita. Kita dah ada semalam saja, kita dah ada lebih daripada 120 meeting. Malacca Police Chief Dr. Abdul Jalil Hassan in a press conference after nomination day said all candidates contesting in the general election must apply for permits before holding any political talks. This is to facilitate police monitoring especially concerning traffic safety and public order during event. Barasa National Youth Chairman Kairi Jamaluddin is planning to take legal action over claims by PKR Vice President Rafizi Ramli that he was responsible for the election commission's decision to prevent PKR's candidate, Dr. S. Sreram, from entering the nomination center at the Sri Rambau Hall on Saturday. Now, Kairi said although Rafizi had made many remarks about him before and gotten away with it, he would not let the Pandan incumbent off the hook this time as it involved the integrity of the May 9th general election. So, benda ni kena dijelaskan. Yeah? Dan Rafizi ni dia memang kaki penipu. So, kita kena ajar dia betul-betul. Sekali aja dia betul-betul yang kalau dia menipu dia akan berhadapan dengan dengan apa tindakan mahkamah. Kairi, who is also Amno Youth Chief and BN's candidate for the Rambau Parliamentary seat, said Rafizi's baseless accusation and his spread of false news via his Facebook and Twitter accounts were an offence under the Anti-Fake News Act 2018. Kairi said his lawyer would file a letter of demand to Rafizi to withdraw his statement. 300 officers and additional personnel from the Immigration Department will be stationed at all entry points in Johor to ensure smooth traffic flow for Malaysian citizens who are returning home to vote in the 14th general election. 
In Johor, Immigration Department Director Dr. Sri Rohaizi Bahari said the assignment of the additional personnel would take effect from May 8th to May 10th, aimed at assessing existing members to carry out their essential duties at the Bangunan Sultan Iskanda and Sultan Abu Bakar complex. Now, the duties included controlling traffic flow or to become replacement officers. To date, a total of 250 personnel are stationed at the Bangunan Sultan Iskandar and 100 personnel at the Sultan Abu Bakar complex. An additional 100 will be deployed for every shift in both places. And in order to prevent untoward incidents such as system failure, it has also instructed its information technology officers to be ready for any possibility. Dr. Sri Rohaizi also said that all counters will be open to reduce traffic congestion. Well, the National Anti-Drug Agency, AADK, arrested nine individuals in a series of raid in Kedah on suspicion of being drug addicts. Now, the operation, which began last night and ended this morning, was conducted by the Padang Taram AADK. Now, according to District Agency Chief Officer Zainal Labadin Ismail, the first raid was made in Padu and Padang Nur, where four suspects were detained. And one suspect was arrested in a second raid conducted on a house in Bandang Raja, while the remaining four suspects were arrested in Kampung Indin, Kampung Semeliang, and Kampung Tanjung. All suspects, aged between 17 and 40, tested positive for opiate and metafetamine and will be investigated under Section 3, Subsection 1 of the Drug Dependence for Treatment and Rehabilitation Act, 1983. Well, coming up, young generation urge to equip themselves with knowledge of... And if you just joined us, welcome to News on 2. Now, the Maha Tafiz Darul Rizwan, which will be built in Bagandata, will take in 1,000 Tafiz students every year to create professional Hufaz students. And Deputy Prime Minister and Dr. Sri Dr. Ahmad Zahid Hamidi said the Tafiz Center is in line with the government's aim in producing 125,000 Hufaz nationwide through the 2050 National Transformation or TN50 program. Dr. Sri Dr. Ahmad Zahid, who is also the incumbent Bangan Dato Member of Parliament, said in order to join the Tafiz, each student is required to sit for the Sijil Plajar Malaysia SPM examination. The Deputy Premier said this at a gathering with Tafiz students in Bagandato at Dewan Haja Tumina, Sungai Nipah Daran, Bagandato, Perak. The program organized by the Bagandato Islamic Religious Office was attended by about 200 students from seven Tafiz schools in the constituency. Meanwhile, Tafiz Centre operators were also reminded to emphasize on the level of security and welfare of its students before setting up Tafiz centers in order to avoid any undesirable events. The young generation should equip themselves with the knowledge of digital technology, not only to master its applications, but also to leverage on the technological advances to generate revenue. Now, this includes online business applications such as Ihu Sahawan and Irazaki. And Communications and Multimedia Minister, Dr. Sri Dr. Mohammed Saleh Tun Said Kerouac, said a stable economy has a major impact on the development of infrastructure in the country. And these infrastructure included basic facilities such as paved roads, water supply and electricity, as well as the provision of various skills training to build the socio-economic of the people. And Dr. Sri, Dr. Mohamed Saleh said this after launching the Community Development Center, Kamas, Quick Win Program in Kota Balud, Sabah. The program aims to help local communities gain additional educational trainings without incurring high capital expenditure. And in line with the nation's goal of producing quality and competitive human capital. An allocation of 450 million ringgit has been announced to build a new road connecting Bintangor and Sarake in Sarawak. And Chief Minister Dato Patingi Abang Johari Tunoping said the project, well, the road from Sungai Pasi in Bintangor to Tanjung Manis, also encompasses a 17 kilometer standard road and a 1.28 kilometer bridge. Tuan-tuan, ini dalam plan. I'm not talking.
Once completed, the road will shorten travel time from Sarakei to Tanjung Manis, which previously took over two hours to only 20 minutes. And speaking at the launch of Sejiwa Sanada Outreach Program in Bintangor, Dato Patingi Abang Johari also announced an allocation of 81 million ringgit to implement a water treatment project in Maradong. That concludes this afternoon's edition of News on 2. In our top story, BN reveals 18-point manifesto for Chinese community in Bagandato. Join us again at 7 p.m. for more updates on the latest happenings and around the world. Thanks for joining us. I'm Amin Carlos. Stay tuned to TV2. Have a nice day.